everybody, I'm Nick Boltman. I'm an abstract artist out of Arizona, United States. And I'm here with the Red 8 Gallery today. And I am doing a quick interview before my first show, Beyond the Algorithms, debuting September 14th at 6 p.m. Really excited to help answer any questions and get to know you guys more and share my story. So I've, I feel like I've always been an artistic and creative person, but I never tried to have a career path that supported that. I did the very tried and true path of going through college, getting a degree, doing the corporate job. And honestly, it was great. I learned a lot. I, ha I learned how to work with a team, you know, accomplish tasks for a business and get paid. But ultimately, I didn't feel that what I was doing was tied to my soul, tied to my creativity. And it wasn't until about a year or two ago that I just picked up some paints, was working in the garage studio, just going really hard at that thing that was so dormant in me for a long time and having a lot of success posting it online. And that's led up to today where I'll be hosting my first show. That's a really important thing for me is trying to create art that shows that there's something still special about handmade art. You know, anyone that's, that's lived in the art world for this year especially has seen artificial intelligence just take off online. You see these large data sets that are training algorithms that are, first of all, not with the artist's permission, which is a big problem, but second, you're creating these amazing images that seem to trivialize handmade artistic ability. Um, of course, you can make the argument that art still needs to be curated, you still need the right prompts, et cetera. But I'm just trying to revitalize something that I think is important about handmade art, about human intuition. And I'm trying to explore that with these pieces today that you're seeing. This is a, this is a body of two years of work that borrows from principles that usually end up taking the form of fluidity and geometry and digital art, and then combining it into that intuitive fluid space. And this kind of art really resonates with me. And I'm not necessarily trying to make some kind of political message, some social message. This is all just art that I really love making, and I'm just happy that other people love it too. One thing I think is really unique about my art is what you see, a lot of the central energy of a piece that you see comes from mere seconds of, of moments. Um, these seconds involve a lot of paint, and they involve just split seconds of energy of some kind of intuitive motion that I'm trying to capture. And sometimes I'll spend hours, even days, practicing that motion, getting in the flow state, really trying to abstract about what is the central energy here? Is it gonna to be touching the ground? Is it gonna be part of a landscape? And that's a lot of different from uh, the typical kind of painting that you might see with, with a brush on a canvas. I think a lot of where this comes from is, is my background as a track and field athlete. So my, my dad um, almost went to the Olympics in shot put, as well as my little brother. He qualified for the Olympic trials. And so it's just in our family, it's in our blood to, to be people that are always trying to push and achieve more with ourselves, with our athletic ability. And, you know, I used to, I used to film myself actually taking throws for track and field. And I would analyze them myself. I would coach myself, send them to my family, and we would all help each other try to get better at this technique. So I'm very comfortable taking film of my emotions, analyzing them, trying to back engineer why things are happening the way they are. And it's my own little world that I've created for this type of fluid painting. And I think that's something unique that I just wanted to share because I think that might give context as to another part of the energy that inspires a lot of my paintings. I started doing process videos for a lot of reasons. I number one do them because that is what the algorithm is promoting, right? Ironically, my show is called Beyond the Algorithms because I'm trying to go beyond what social media is requiring artists to do to get found these days. But another thing is I love making process videos. I love chopping it up to music I like. I like to tell a visual story through the process. I like to bring the viewer along the journey of making them feel like they're also creating a piece and seeing it with such techniques that appear rudimentary or simple and then seeing something extremely complex by the end of it and chopping that into like a 30 second or 45 second video. Of course, what you don't see is the hundreds, 130 hours max is my max I've ever done, but you don't see that. And I do that intentionally because I want to, I want to give people the sizzle, not the steak. And for the people that really want to learn about the process, I offer that as well. 
but that's why I started doing process videos. It's, it's a whole visual story that I like to create for my audience and I love doing them. Um, not everyone loves making process videos, but it's, it's a big thing for me. So it's become part of my brand, I think. This is a very important special piece to me. It was the first time that I've utilized brand specific colors being Gucci. You see the dark green and the dark red. And I wanted to do something that was such my style that it could not be mistakable for anyone else over time. I want to create a legacy. And I think this piece for me is that now this was made using a dustpan for the first half and then hand painted the second half where I did, I probably practiced it four or five times, but you know, doing this motion and I wasn't sharing that on social media, the practice stuff. And then I just, I was in a flow state and I just went for it. And I was so happy with the separation of the colors, how the, the greens and the reds dried. And you can see here, it's a very faint line. This is exactly where I cut off that dustpan pour and then just hand painted the rest of these features to make it look like all one slide. Right. And of course, I'm playing with the term Gucci slide like you see Gucci flip flops, Gucci slides. I just thought it was the perfect name, perfect situation. And then, of course, the 24 karat gold. It's never going to tarnish. This is an eternal, obviously relevant, you know, metal. And I try to have that depth where it shows that the bottom is coming loose from the ribbons at the top and the gold accentuates that depth. So this was a hundred hour piece. Obviously, I've gotten more technical since then to where I could have done this a little quicker. But at the time, this was a very emotional piece for me to finish. It really challenged my patience. And I'm just so happy that I was able to, to create it and I love it still.